So this, this articulates by itself. Does it, it does, work? yes, yeah, yeah. So if I just press this. Okay. Oh. Okay, here we are. Now the unique thing about this, good morning yes. sir, is that uh, this is unfolding in actual real time and I'm yet to, oh my god, <laughs> see this car. <laughs> Crikey, it's huge. Yes, Where sir. do you begin with this? Kindly meet the Rolls-Royce boat tail. So it's called the boat tail. It is, yes, yeah. and all will become clear um, as we go through the car, but a a modern interpretation of the historic boat tail uh, body style. I mean, it's quite literally a road yacht, isn't it? <laughs> There's certainly a sort of nautical unbelievable. influence. Unbelievable. How long have you been working on this for? Um, it's been sort of four years um, since the, since the years. first uh, client discussions, let's say. Um, okay. I mean, you know the brand very, very well, uh -huh. and, and we, we proudly stand behind a, a commission model. Um, that is to say that the the end result is very much guided by the client in terms of, of definition um, and we don't necessarily always know where that's going to take us um, and in this instance um, we have arrived at yeah this as the as the conclusion of four years of, of work uh, and four years of I have to say fantastic curation with with some you know marvelous clients of ours. Did this start at a similar time to Sweptail or did it come off the back of that that project? Um, it was uh, let's say Swiftail somehow, I think, worked um, almost as a catalyst uh, in the sense that um, Swiftail also equally born out of this notion that we work to a commission model. Um, uh -huh. But I think on, on, on revealing Swiftail, everybody almost understood a new watermark in terms of where you can possible. progress to. Um, and, and that, I think it's, it's fair to say, stimulated a, a level of, of, of imagination um, within our, our client base. And we like to think that all of our clients are extraordinary, but somehow within that group exists individuals who seek so much more than, than just the, the motor cars that we produce. Um, and they seek that opportunity to curate and to commission. Um, and that was really the, the start point for the preliminary discussions and the preliminary designs um, that led us in the direction of this wonderful motor car. How long is this thing? Um, it's just over 5.7 meters. Um, so as I mentioned, sort of uh, generous. Um, <laughs> but uh, hopefully, as you can recognize, and it's something we, we, we really did uh, labor over, is that it's really the proportion and the scale that does the talking. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where this sort of sense of impact and, and almost demonstration of the kind of presence of the, of the concept comes across. But the detailing, particularly the surface treatment, it's very reduced, it's pared back, it's, it's mm -hmm. simplified. Um, we're very conscious, especially in this space, that you know, cars are almost sort of defined by this metric of more is more. Uh -huh. you know, it's more differentiation, it's kind of hyper-characterization, whereas we really wanted to exercise almost a newfound level of restraint. Uh, and you can see just the cleanliness of the surfaces, the purity of the lines, and also the fidelity of the form. I mean, uh, remarkably, the car is all fashioned from sheet aluminium. It's hammer-formed. Um, is it really? That allows us to do amazing things, you know, things that we would never normally be allowed to achieve through industrialized techniques. So you can just see the, the general clarity of, of line and surface and, and precision. Um, it's incredibly smooth, isn't it? It really incredibly is. Incredibly so. It really is. Unfortunately, a lot of modern design is littered with almost superfluous detail. Um, yes. and, and we really wanted to, to, to break away from that. And actually, I think you, you sit in front of the most progressive element to the overall concept and that's of course the treatment of our iconic Pantheon grille. Um, the first time ever it's not this sort of appliqued trophy applied to the front of the car, it's mm -hmm. really deconstructed into its component elements to inform the, not just the structure but the visual representation at the front of the car. Um, the contrast colour water falling over beautifully into the, the grille space itself and even the atrium of our Pantheon grille is sort of softened to kind of lessen the, the formality. We very much want the car to be a, a, an owner driver's concept and mm -hmm. I think it's the grille, especially the treatment of the grille, that, that really demonstrates that in a very clear way. 
when a client comes to you with it, why, why do you start with this? Because it seems <laughs> like, so am I right in thinking, is everything about this bespoke from ground up? Absolutely, yes. So this isn't yes. a shared chassis or anything like that? The, the chassis is derived from our aluminium architecture. Uh -huh. um, and of course, as you can tell by way of the scale, it, it has a lot of similarities with the, the Phantom lineage. Um, and there are some componentry, particularly on the interior, um, that is very obviously recognizable for good reason from yes. the main portfolio. But the exterior form, as you can see it here, is, is completely unique. Um, and every single body panel and a lot of the complexity that we'll get into, especially at the rear end, mm -hmm. um, has all been designed and developed uniquely for this concept, for only three cars, which is, you know, wow, really, really astounding. I guess other than on the black badge, I don't necessarily associate carbon fiber heavily with Rolls-Royce to see this massive section here that's basically forged out of carbon it's stunning but for for very good reasons you know it's actually for its structural um, rigidity particularly in this rear area yeah. it actually defines this whole upper structure of the rear of the car um, and also then provides the basis for some of this complex movement um, the pannier we describe this area as almost the rear hosting area and, and there's mm -hmm. a lovely link also back to the personality of the of the clients in the sense that we were very fortunate through the development process to spend quite a lot of time in their company and they were just the most generous hosts you know they were just wonderful wonderful people to spend Fantastic. time with and we really felt that that spirit should somehow live in the car and almost that we always think for me at least Rolls-Royce in terms of its sensibility and I think it's a typically British quality that it that it's almost it's there to serve you know it's, it's there to uh -huh. very very respectfully and very dutifully um, fulfill the, the the requirements of its of its owner and we wanted the car to almost host you here at the rear so it, subtle touches and again credit to the phenomenal engineers that we worked with where it's not simply kind of utilitarian provisioning this really offers itself to you so the butterfly mechanism the lid that rotate towards center line the fact that the panniers then create this inclination so they rotate up to a 15 degree angle that subtle difference just as if it's sort of offering itself to you and and even these beautiful picnic tables you know they rotate round so they move from this sort of flush fitted oh condition my good here. lord that is absolutely yeah. gorgeous isn't that it really is and it's a, be it's a beautiful thing to use you know it's lovely waiting and again just a real demonstration of ingenuity what is quite amazing is its overall profile, mm. super simple. And as soon as you start to look at it, the amount of detail in it, it's crazy. It Am really I seeing a blue weave in this? Car? You are, yes, yes, so it's, it's a technical weave. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. it's got a, a contrasting blue fiber running through the actual carbon weave itself. Indeed, yes, yeah. And moreover, we actually also extend it to these beautiful stools, um, which we again created um, from the ground up. I've just um, noticed that these are <laughs> carbon stools. Um, if, if I'd have known that, I would have taken a few steps back before I, <laughs> before I wandered around the car. Yes, yeah. Mm. No, I mean, training as an automotive designer, I never thought I'd find myself penning a stool. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And here we worked with an Italian uh, furniture maker um, to create this unique interlocking clamshell design um, to create this slimline package That's that allows you to thing. stow it underside, un underneath the panning, I love sorry. this twist in it, the twist gorgeous, in the it? carbon is stunning. Really and brilliant. small details, just, I'm not sure if the camera can see it, but just little, I mean, everything feels billet and beautiful, you know. It's it really a, is. A really gorgeous, is. gorgeous thing. Uh, the most astounding thing for me with this project really is that it exists, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, in this day and age with, with the general consumption trends that we experience, you know, for for not just a mark, but also for, for customers to impart with so much patience, so mm -hmm. much trust, and mm -hmm. so much encouragement for us to, to create something extraordinary, but for us to have the latitude to pen the car that we believe projects the modernity of the brand, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, yes. really, and really moves it on. It's not a, a retrospective fulfillment of creating something unique. It's, it's really about progress, and you could describe it almost as modern patronage. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's really about commissioning the next chapter for this great brand. And then yeah, as your eye wanders onto the interior, you can see again with the exterior, this sort of reduced um, paired back feeling, really allowing the beauty of the materials to do the storytelling. Um, even the, the cockpit fascia is relatively simplified. All the technology that we could disguise and, and remove distraction from have been um, placed behind you know, lovely surfaces. 
and then as a centerpiece is a um, bespoke um, timepiece. I was going to say, run me through that watch. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the tale behind that is almost as extraordinary as the car itself. But um, the, the client is, of course, a, you know, a great aficionado of, of timepieces and you know, individually commissioned timepieces and, and wanted wow. to create something unique for this car to bring together in his mind his two passions, Rolls-Royce and, and timekeeping, you know, horology as a discipline. Um, and we worked with Bouvet, uh, the uh -huh. Swiss watch manufacturer, um, to complete, to our mind, the first ever um, to beyond movement applied directly into a car. Um, so that's embedded into it, as opposed to a removable. Well, it is it. actually removable. There's three examples of this being produced. How individual is each one? Does each one have a, as much of a unique story? Very much so, yeah. So the only similarity between the three cars is the body style. Um, okay, so we, wow. we wanted to create almost, you could describe it as a sort of critical mass of more than a one-off in the boat tail body style to mm -hmm. really, you know, almost qualify it as a, as a modern interpretation. Um, and that's really where the similarity ends. So all of the detailing, the materiality, the colors, the appointment in the rear really? varies okay. considerably from, from one car to the next. Right, okay. But as you see here standing at the rear, there's this wonderful symmetry. So on, on this side, it's provision for, for eating. Mm -hmm. um, even things like, as I open here, you can see the um, Christophe wow. cutlery. So we work with Christophe in Paris to create a unique um, cutlery set. It's inscribed with the car's name um, in here. And, also the crockery itself, um, and then you can see the chilled food containers inside here, the non-chilled food containers here, um, salt and pepper um, grinders, not shakers, as okay, we were reminded yeah, when, we, when we made that blunder with one of, one of the clients. And they describe when have you ever been to a Michelin star restaurant and used a shaker? Used the shaker. Yes, <laughs> noted. <laughs> And I think this is the, the, the marvel really for me because the ingenuity, the fascination and the engineering that has gone into this purely informed by the notion of hosting. You know, right, and, yes. And nothing more. It's not about performance. It's not about, you know, um, any of these other typical qualifications of engineering achievement. Mm -hmm. It's really just a beautiful, beautiful thing to use. And this, the talking about the viability of the car, this has all been um, high speed tested. Um, so believe it or not, yes. this with all of its provisions has, has been around Millbrook several, several times. Is it really? Yeah. So no. you've sent this around Millbrook, Absolutely. full setup in the back. Absolutely, yes, yeah, just to make sure there was no noise, vibrations, and they okay. even had to, to make some subtle adjustments to some of this configuration. And then, yes, talking about sort of accomplishment, the, the parasol, and not just any parasol, um, one that we designed and developed um, from the ground up Upwards, um, specifically for this application. So it deploys out of this um, sleeve in the center here. Mm -hmm. um, it has that cap. Again, you can see just the quality of, of execution. So has there been any enhancements to engine or is, is that taken from existing family? translated into this. Absolutely, yeah, so it's from the Phantom. That's the uh, only ingredient that's unchanged um, because you know, it's not what characterizes the sure. car. And, yeah. and let's also yeah. face it, the, the client was extremely happy with the way uh, Phantom. I was gonna say, it's not, <laughs> not like it needs changing. <laughs> really, when you build a car like this with Rolls-Royce, the client is becoming part of the company's history. Because it's such a significant car Absolutely, to add yeah. to, you know, it's amazing really. Absolutely, no, I mean, I think in commissioning a coach build Rolls-Royce, you really, you mark your place almost in the legacy of the brand. And mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting, we often reflect in the studio that when we talk about historic Rolls Royces, we often talk more so about the personalities of the owners mm -hmm. and sure. you know the, 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 the choices of their commissions more so than we do the cars. And you compare that to, yeah. and maybe I'm biased if it's a sports car manufacturer, so forth, it's more about the accomplishments of the car. Yes. Um, and I think that's an interesting part of, 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 of the Rolls Royce story that somehow makes us uh, unique. Thank you.